All right, good morning, Checkmate crew. It's 30 minutes after the opening bell in New York Stock Exchange at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on this Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. It's Mickey Blindside here with your market memo. Okay, let's just go over real quick. It's the week before options expiration next week. Um, it is next week, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so next week we've got uh, OPEX um options expiration it's also quad witching so there's dividends being paid out uh options prices are accounting for that dividend so if you guys uh you know want to manage some risk this is probably the time you know probably no not now but next week you know you probably want to get out before all the dividends get paid out um but uh let's just go over what's going on so we actually saw some uh some selling yesterday okay we saw an outsized uh move in the vix compared to the sell-off i mean vix was up almost seven percent uh and while the market uh you know and it's, it's also you know vix is also in the 20s guys you know so but the market only went down less than two percent so uh we're seeing those outsized vix moves we actually talked about this in the summer where we are, we started to see the data show us that we might see the VIX come back. Remember in the summer, we had this dash for cash. Uh, as interest rates went up, there was this alternative. And so a lot of institutions, instead of hedging and buying puts, they actually sold a lot of shares to raise cash and then make their you know, 4% on the bond market. Uh, now we're actually seeing those outsized VIX spikes whenever the market pulls back. That means hedging demand is coming back. And remember back in October, since October, we actually saw a lot of institutional buying in shares. So all those new shares are probably is what causing uh, this demand for hedging. And so we're seeing the VIX, you know, spike up. Um, you know, right now it's already up almost 3%, but the market is only down 0.3%. So again, we're starting to see that uh, these outsized moves in the VIX, hedging demand is coming back into the market. Um, we shall see if this continues. If this continues, then most likely sometime next year, we're probably going to have a rolling bull market, a mini bull market in between a longer term bear trend. OK, so that might last, you know, a few weeks, possibly even a few months. OK, uh, again, I'll believe it when I see it. OK, that that the, the setup in the data is there. It doesn't mean it's happened yet. OK, of course, in order to bet live money on that, we're going to want to see some confirmation on that. OK, um, but the setup is there. OK, the setup is there. Speaking of OPEX, let's take a look at options positioning for OPEX. This is the S&P 500 uh, index uh, options chain. This was taken this morning right before the opening bell. Um, so as we can see here, the, the open interest only updates once. It up, updates around midnight. So this is for uh, after all of yesterday's transactions. And we're actually seeing, look at these put walls. Look at these major put walls. We are extremely hedged for next week now next week is as options expiration end of the year and quad witching but guess what else is next week that's right the cpi report on tuesday and fomc on wednesday so it is going to be a crazy week next week all right make sure you get a lot of rest over the weekend because you're going to need it okay if you're an, especially if you're an active trader next week is going to be a jam-packed week with data with trades probably a lot of volatility in you know in both directions um so make sure that you're mentally prepared for that but we are under some major put walls this put wall right here that's right it's 154,000 on the spx not spy we're talking about spx uh, the nominal value of an spx options contract it's 10 times more than an spy contract OK, so nominally, it's like there's one point five million puts open interest right here on four thousand uh, uh, around, you know, let's say four hundred or so on SPY. It is the SPY equivalent. OK, but on SPX, one hundred and fifty four thousand, thirty three thousand, thirty five thousand. So we're under some major, major put walls. Um, if the VIX decreases, we're probably going to see market makers having to cover their shorts. Now, just a reminder for all of those that are not as familiar with options. When 
market participants buy puts, okay? And so, you know, usually most institutions are long on equities and they hedge using puts, okay? So whenever market participants buy puts to protect their portfolios, the market maker has to sell them that put, which is a bullish position. To offset that bullish position and to remain delta neutral, they have to short some of the underlying, usually a futures contract or SPY shares. They have to short the underlying uh, uh, to be delta neutral, all right? Now, as time progresses, the deltas on those out the money puts decrease all right especially out the money but also in the money as well too but the, the 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 deltas start decreasing so when the deltas start decreasing the market maker will have to cover some of their shorts again to remain delta neutral now if those market participants decide to cash in their puts then we're going to see buying and mass in order to remain delta neutral by the market maker okay so uh, again, we're we're very hedged for next week. Again, I, I presume it's because of the uh, CPI and FOMC. If next week the CPI comes out lower than expected, if FOMC, you know, nothing uh, crazy happens, we could see the VIX fall. And if the VIX is falling, we could see a squeeze up uh, into the four thousands uh, at some time next week. All right. In order for the markets to keep going down, we're going to need the VIX to go up. All right, the VIX needs to keep marching higher in order for us to stay at these levels or go lower. Okay, so there's no need to guess. You know, somebody asked me. You know, when I mentioned that on the Discord, somebody asked me. You know, the you know, are you then predicting that this is going to go up? Well, you know, we don't have to guess. We'll just look at the VIX, and the VIX keeps going higher and higher. Most likely, the market's going to go lower. Again, when VIX is going up, it means a lot of participants are buying puts. Market maker has to sell those puts and has to short the underlying to stay delta neutral. If VIX is dropping, we're seeing delta decay on these puts. Market maker will have to buy some of the underlying in order to remain delta neutral. Okay, and so you know that that's the uh, that's the dynamics of um, of active options hedging by institutions on the S and P five hundred markets. Okay, so uh, that's something to watch out for if you're a day trader. It's a really good idea to start looking at the VIX. Um, these options expiration levels for monthly options expiration are going to be more important and the, the effects are going to be stronger and stronger as we get closer and closer to options expiration. I presume that this week and next week, we're probably going to chop around big moves in both directions, okay? Another reason why we're also seeing a lot of chop is because of the end of year tax uh, tax loss harvesting and tax selling. So yesterday, uh, this, this is something that I uh, noticed, uh, you know, while I was uh, uh, researching block trades and big institutional orders yesterday on the market, um, we saw heavy selling in a lot of oil stocks, okay? So let's take a look at XLE. We saw a huge drawdown in XLE. Uh, at the same time, we saw a huge drawdown in semiconductor stocks. There was a pair trade. These were pair trades. And if you actually line up the big orders, it actually, it lines up actually quite well. So what I think is happening is right now, institutions are selling their winners. And what's the winner this year? You know, it's energy, right? Come on, it's commodities, energy. That's the stuff that's been winning this year, all right? Take a look at 2022 from 2020. Uh, forward start of 2022 is right here xle has gone up you know tremendously around 50 60 percent all right at the same time the semis have uh have lost a lot of value uh again you know inflationary times uh uh tightening less liquidity in uh and, and higher interest rates pushed down the semiconductor space by about a third or so, all right? So basically, they're selling off their losers to offset the gains on their winners, 
so that they can keep more of their earnings okay a lot of fund managers this is what they do at the end of the year okay this has been this has been observed this is not something new this is not something i came up with this has been observed for the last 100 years in the market okay this is something that always happens okay um so we're starting to see that pair trade uh metals was also involved as well too uh metals you uh, one could argue oh uh, well you know a lot of that was due to uh uh, due to the dollar, uh, it could be, it could be, but we, you know, metals has also been a decent winner this year. I'm sure there are some people who took profits on this as well too, uh, but not so much. Uh, a, a, you know, as, as far as a pair trade is concerned, the biggest pair trade I saw was in energy stocks and in semis. Okay, so what does this mean? We could actually see this uh, continue for the uh, for the rest of the year. Okay, we could see this continue. All right. Uh, and, you know, what would happen then is that the S&P 500 would chop around this big range. So not only is the options market kind of showing us that we're going to chop around in the big range, but also just seasonality is telling us we might we might see that choppiness. And again, it's because we're selling we're, we're, we're selling winners and losers. All right. And rebalancing those positions and harvesting those losses. Uh, and so we're, I think we're going to see a lot of that. I think if. The 10-year Treasury rate keeps going up. This is going to intensify. Okay, I think if, if interest rates keep coming down, then we're probably this is probably more going to be a, a more muted tax uh, loss harvesting season. Okay, so it really depends on the 10-year Treasury rate because th usually the 10-year Treasury bond is what you is used for collateral. So if that collateral value keeps going up, meaning rates are coming down, the yields on the 10-year treasury bonds are coming down, it means that you know, they, you know, the, there's going to be less of a demand to do this uh, uh, loss harvesting. Whereas if the value of the collateral, the 10-year treasury bond goes down, meaning yield goes up, we're going to see a little bit more demand to do this harvesting. Okay, uh, I think next on the list is probably something like the industrials. Okay, Industrials have been doing... Um, uh, well, too well. Not all the industrials, but you know, specifically like you know, Caterpillar and these kind of names. Uh, I don't know. If Boeing is Boeing. Did Boeing did well this year? No, not so much. Okay, so you know, we might see more of that. We might see in the metal spaces. Uh, you know, that happening. Metals have been doing actually uh, very well as uh, well too. Um, so we might see more of that. Uh, happening as we get closer and closer to the end of the year. So that's something I noticed. I think it's going to confuse a lot of people, uh, you know, and a lot of these moves, you know, a lot of people rely on their uh, uh, TA or their charting. Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of your levels can get overshot or, you know, and you might see certain lines get violated only to have it uh, get back in next day or the day after. You might see a lot of that. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, okay? So just a warning for you guys out there. I am starting to see those pair trades, and when I see those pair trades, winners and losers getting sold off at the same time, it means it's tax loss harvesting. And again, it happens around this time. Usually actually it happens around November, but this year for some reason, it's happening just a little bit later. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, the markets will do what the markets will do, okay? So I just wanted to clear that up. Speaking of energy and oil, oh my goodness yesterday what a huge drawdown in oil okay um i heard some rumors that uh some hedge funds got liquidated in this move a lot of hedge funds apparently uh got leveraged long on commodities and energy names as that was the only thing that was really working very well this year they uh, over leveraged long and then when we started seeing this pullback since the summer a lot of them got into margin calls and got liquidated and there's you know there, there's some rumors right now that this is you know this move uh is based on some hedge fund liquidations we shall see whenever the hedge fund liquidations do happen we usually hear about it days or weeks after it happens okay as the trades settle and as you know as uh, windows get shuttered and things like that so you know we'll, we'll see what happens but uh, it does appear as if uh, that may be the case um, that you know that may be but uh, 
I think more importantly than anything else in the oil market is this. It's the crack spread, that gasoline crack spread, the diesel crack spread. It is making lower lows. I mean, our, the gasoline and distillates are making lower lows now. Uh, this does not incentivize refineries to buy oil to produce distillates. Okay, there's, there's just less of an incentive to do that. If your profit margins are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, why would you spend money on oil to make uh, a, a product that you're making less money on, okay? You're just, you're just getting less incentive to do so. I think if, the, uh, if gasoline just keeps coming down and down and down, at some point refineries, I mean, if, if, if gasoline comes down enough, I think refineries will be forced to sell futures contracts on oil just to hedge at that point, to hedge their supply, okay? Um, which means we could see crude oil dump even more. I mean, we could see it go down to 65 or so. Um, we shall see. Although it does look like, doesn't it look like if it, if it ends green for the day, that does appear to be an exhaustion signal, does it not? It means that sellers could be exhausted. I don't know. We'll, we'll see at the end of the day if that's what it is. Um, I'm not going to guess on what happens. If it shows me an exhaustion signal, then it shows me an exhaustion signal, but it, it, it isn't until it is, and we won't know until the end of the day, okay? So this is something to look out for. If you're active in the energy space, I would definitely take a look at this. You would wanna also see that in gasoline as well. You would want gasoline to you know form that huge wick and end uh, with a green candle right here for the day, okay? And again, we won't know until later today at, the cl at, at closing, all right? So for you energy traders out there, this is something to look out for. RB, you know, uh, RBOB on some uh, other brokerages, but that's the gasoline futures. Uh, also look at crude oil as well. Look out for that daily candle at the end of the day, all right? Speaking of energy, let's also, you know, while we're in this energy um, topic, let's talk about nat gas. I mean, the more I do research on this, the more I think that, you know, natural gas, oh, you know, I'm I'm getting more and more bullish on this the more research I do. So I am really looking for a pullback in some of these uh, natural gas names. Uh, one of the natural gas names that we're trying to get into, although they're not a producer, is uh, a, a a tanker, a natural gas t a tanker and and container company. Um, I think. You know, again, the, some, you know, the, the, the thesis here is that there's a lot of cargo container ships that need upgrading. The new ones that are being built right now are very, very expensive, and they're not going to be operational until 2026, 2027. So these companies that have newer ships uh, and more eco-friendly ships, more modern ships, they're going to command more of a premium in their rates, okay? So, uh, and also to just rates in general are probably going to increase as there is that, sh that, that, that uh, shortage in shipping. And again, we talked about our thesis in, uh, in uh, 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 shipping before. And if you click on the top right corner, that exclamation point, I'll put some links to our previous uh, videos where we talk more in depth about the cargo and maritime shipping uh, thesis that we have. But, you know, but then that right now, you know, we're kind of also, you know, that the, 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 mari the, the maritime company that we're trying to get into also has that natural gas and uh, hydrocarbon uh, exposure. So that's why we also saw it uh, go down as well, too. FLNG, I'm ready to get in when it gets to 3336. When it gets to 3336, I'm getting into some leaps. And again, Discord, I'll let you guys know. Uh, you know, what strikes and everything I'm looking at. Uh, right now, I'm looking at uh, January 2024s, possibly January 2025s in the money leaps. I'm looking for Delta 65 to 75. Um, and then I'm going to be selling poor man's covered calls against it. But anyway, uh, so natural gas right now, you know, if you look at natural gas, um, oops, I forgot. Um, Trading view does not require that little front slash in futures. Anyway, natural gas futures, uh, it did draw down as well, too. We're seeing a little bit of a bounce today. Um, but this chart obviously looks very different than the European natural gas chart. Okay, the European natural gas chart, if you actually look at it on a weekly basis, is starting to make 
an uptrend again. It is actually maintaining it. Not, not, that, that was wrong vernacular. It is still in an uptrend. It's not making an uptrend again. It's always been in an uptrend at least since around 2021, okay? It's been in this weekly uptrend. It's still maintaining it. It made a higher low and it's already coming back up. We, you know, about a month or two ago, everybody was saying, uh, oh, we're expecting a milder than expected uh, winter in Europe. How do they know? How did you know two or three months beforehand that they were going to have a milder winter? It made no sense to me. And so a lot of natural gas names actually started selling off between uh, before then. Also, we saw a selling in natural gas futures because of that. And I thought that's the most ridiculous thing. How do they know that when the, the, that that's going to be the case? I mean, perhaps they have some statistical modeling, this and that, yada, yada, yada. But, oh, well, look, lo and behold, uh, last week or the week before, now they're reporting a cold snap in Europe. And so now everybody's, uh, uh, you know, uh, scuttling around, uh, you know, and trying to, um, you know, now they're worried about the natural gas supplies in Europe. So we're actually seeing some pressure in uh, the European stock index because of this. Um, we will see there's some fears, although it is actually uh, recovering most of its losses for the day. Uh, we are seeing it pull back a little bit because of that. Uh, I think if natural gas, especially the European uh, futures contracts, the ones that are traded on Eurex, if they uh, if they uh, if it keeps going up. All right. And if it just just keeps roaring higher, I do think that's going to put some pressure on the euro stock exchanges, uh, the euro stock indices. Uh, we're still in our um, our uh, FEZ puts uh, trade. I'm still in it. It's all paid for by our, our UVXY puts that we had a few weeks ago. Remember the December 7 puts? We bought it at eight cents uh, right before the last FOMC, and we sold it for about you know 27 and 21. So you know those gains actually paid for all of this. So I'm willing to let it run, but. Uh, but it'd be nice to get a payout on this. I think it'll, it's going to take a few weeks. Uh, let's see what happens when that cold snap, uh, you know, e either worsens or what, or if we see, you know, the the, the gas supplies decrease, uh, we could really see the European stock exchanges um, sell off. Uh, this is acting as a hedge as well too. You know, something that has a little bit of a negative delta for you know all the shares that we're acquiring. So I'm willing to keep this open. Um, and also too, you know, the dollar. If, if the dollar also keeps going up as well too, we could see, uh, you know, the euro uh, currency getting pressured. And if that's the case, we might see also again more selling, more of a headwind in European indices. Um, we're still at that level here. I'm still in my UUP, which is the uh, dollar in, uh, index ETF. I'm still in those January 2024 calls. Uh, for uh, around uh, the 30 strike, we're st we're, we got a little bit of a profit on there. Um, we did see the IVs increase on the longer dated contracts, which means a lot of participants are betting on longer term volatility and the dollar. So even though we're lower on UUP uh, than when we entered the trade, because of the IV increase, we're actually profiting from that. So I guess we got a little bit of stroke of luck there. Uh, so we'll see if it balances or not. I do think it's going to balance. And, you know, I've already set my levels right here on the dollar index. I'm going to take half my profits on these, um, on these calls. If they get to 107.75 or so, 107.70 to 107.75 on the dollar index, uh, on half. And then the other half, I'm going to wait till 109.70. Okay. So those are my take profit levels for my UUP, um, and I have my alerts set. Once those alerts trigger, boom, I'm going to start selling and taking profits. Okay. Um, I do think that this is going to be a lower high and then it's going to curve back down. At least that's what I'm anticipating. I'm not trying to predict the future. I'm just trying to anticipate what could happen just based on the data that I'm seeing right now. Um, if it does make a, a higher high, well, um, then our FEZ puts are just going to, I think, uh, perform phenomenally. Um, so... Um, either way, come what may, I think, you know, I think we're ready uh, based on, uh, well, at least I'm ready based on my positioning. Uh, I still have lots of cash to, to get into some of our names that we're trying to get into on some pullbacks. So we will see what happens. Uh, I'm going to keep an open mind about this, though. All right. 
what else? Uh, crypto. Uh, you, some of you guys asked me about crypto uh, uh, over the evening. Uh, I haven't gone over crypto in a while. Well, right now, <clears throat> if you look at the options market on crypto, it's still at around $4.8 billion in open interest on Darabit. So again, I don't think the options are going to pull or push price in any way until it gets, until OI gets to around six and a half to $7 billion. Uh, we're still a ways away from that. I actually noticed that the OI is decreasing as, you know, as time progresses. So we'll see when speculation comes back or when, you know, active hedging or whatever uh, comes back into the Ethereum derivatives market. Um, as far as levels are concerned, I mean, we're just kind of like towing the line on this this level right here, this important zone, this 1241.46 um, zone. We use that as a buy. You know, thank goodness we took some profits at the highs. Um, but, you know, I no longer have a position on this anymore. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, we are getting closer and closer to that ETH gold line. That ETH gold line is not too far away. So if the Ethereum does pull back a little bit, all right, if it pulls back just a little bit, um, you know, or if gold just shoots up, I guess, uh, we could be hitting that line pretty soon. Um, we shall see. And again, I got, I got alerts ready and I got some orders ready. So they, right now, based on gold price, that would be around 955 to 1,000 in Ethereum per coin if we get to that zone. Uh, I'm, again, I'm willing to buy right there. That's the zone we've been waiting on for uh, how long have we been waiting? It? We, we, we've been waiting for that since like July, August. Okay. So, you know, we'll see if patience pays. Usually it does. Um, that's, you know, that's really what I'm looking for here. Okay. That's the zone. That's the only interest. That's the only place that I'd be interested into buying Ethereum is right there. All right. Um, what else? Our liquidity data um, on our, uh, what is it, junk bonds ADL line. Our junk bonds ADL line is actually staying quite stable, um, surprisingly so. It, it hasn't come down as much as I thought it would based on the sell-off that we had in equities. Um, that, you know, that's one, I guess, quote-unquote, stronger data point. Um, we'll see what happens. It, it you know, it, it's, it, it, it doesn't mean as much. Okay. So we're still, we're still pretty high up. We're, we, we haven't seen like a huge gap down on the S and P 500. Um, you know, trend reversals in junk bonds, ADL does take time. And so it, it takes time on the U S indices as well. You know, unless we get some type of shock event in the market where some unknown risk happens, but you know, outside of that, this is not going to turn suddenly. Um, you know, there are some data divergences. So even though the junk bonds ADL line is stable, um, the New York high low line actually uh, tumbled a little bit and actually went below our moving average. And yesterday I said the New York high low line was a little bit stable. But I, after checking again and looking at the moving averages, it's actually below. And, and today, if we go negative, on the New York high low line, which we are negative right now, we're actually going to go below the, the, all the moving averages again, which is actually, a, 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 you know, that means liquidity is actually shrinking again. And um, one other data point that we use is the New York advanced decline line. It actually made a lower low on the, do, the, do, uh, the daily chart. So the New York AD line, the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line is actually decreasing now, making a lower low on the daily chart. So market breadth is decreasing right now, which is not good for liquidity, okay? So we're actually starting to see market breadth actually falling right now. Uh, which is very interesting. Um, so uh, at first I thought, oh, just because of the junk bonds ADL line was stable. I thought that was a positive development. But after looking at everything else, we're starting to see now weaknesses form in the market. So uh, that's very interesting. So maybe, 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 um, you know, maybe it's going to be uh, like, you know, the markets are, ha you know, the SPX has been rising for, let's say, you know, a few weeks now. Maybe this is um, 
a, a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of a thing with FOMC. Uh, everybody's expecting, you know, the Fed to be, uh, you know, less hawkish. And then they do a 50 basis point rate hike, which is on the low end. You know, it was, it, you know, it was a debate between 50 and 75. And now that it actually 50, uh, the, the 50 basis points happens, maybe we see hedging demand come back. Again, the VIX is going to have to go up a lot for the markets to come down on this uh on this options expiration just because of all the put walls that we have but it's possible if hedging demand out you know uh, outpaces all the cashing of those puts then yeah the vix is going to go up and the markets are going to come down you know it is what it is so again i'm going to stay open minded about that um, but we are starting to see cracks in our liquidity data New York advanced decline line is showing us lower breadth, uh, decreasing breadth, and also the New York Stock Exchange high low line, which is the 52 week, the, the 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 stocks that are making 52 week highs minus the stocks that are making 52 week lows. That is also decreasing as well too. And again, today it's already negative. So if it closes negative for the day, we're actually going to be below all the moving averages, which is usually a sign that the bear market is going to continue. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that as well too. So keep that uh, keep that in mind as you plan your trades uh, for the rest of the year. Anything you guys want to look at? Oh, you know what? Yesterday, uh, somebody from YouTube or one of our social media channels asked about uh, First Majestic Silver. Um, and I did a little bit of research yesterday. You know what? I, I don't, you know, I get it. There's a lot of interest in this and, you know, I, I know a lot of metals mining, uh, metals traders that are getting involved in AG, but I just don't like the fundamentals as much. You know, their earnings is not that great. They're still losing money quarter to quarter and they have a large amount of debt. Okay. And so that with a rising interest rate environment, that's just, I, I don't like that. You know, even if the industry is uh, in a very favorable place macro wise, I don't like companies that have a lot of debt in a rising interest rate environment. All right. And I don't want a company that's losing money, and especially a metal miner. Okay. They should be making boatloads of money right now, but they're not. So I, I just don't, I don't like that. Um, that's just me. I mean, that, you know, me, I'm, I really look at those fundamentals, and I think the fundamentals are very important in this environment with inflation going up and interest rates are going up. You know, the definition of an asset is way more stringent in these conditions than it is when interest rates are at rock bottom near zero. So I am going to, I, I, it does not have my blessing as a, a accumulation vehicle. Now, if you want to get involved, that's up to you. You know, nothing I say is financial advice. You know, you're free to do whatever you wish, but I think I'm going to stick to more of the ETFs, uh, SILJ or SILJ. SIL, uh, which are the silver miner ETFs. I'm going to be waiting for a pullback, although it looks like it's up 2.64, probably because the dollar is down. Um, but uh, I'm definitely, I, you know, on the next pullback, if the dollar goes up to that 109 zone and it tops out um, and makes that lower high, definitely I'm going to be buying the dip on the silver junior miners. And again, I'm going to be using leaps poor man's covered call writing. I'm going to be buying deep in the money, um, you know, one to two year out deep in the money calls. And then I'm going to be selling shorter dated out the money calls uh, to lower my cost basis. So that's my plan still on the metal miners. Okay. And I went over that more in detail. I actually made some changes yesterday too. And again, you can click on the top right link uh, the exclamation point. I'm going to put a link in there to uh, yesterday's video and to other videos uh, related to our thesis in today's discussion as well. Okay? So you, can, you all can check that out. Anything else you guys want to look at? Going once. Going twice. All right, in that case, that wraps up our session of the Morning Market Memo, our Discord invitation link is in the description below. Come join our Discord, be a part of our growing community. There's no sub fees, no paywalls. It's of the people, by the people, for the people. And if you enjoyed our video, hit like, follow, subscribe, comment, show us some love, baby. All right, I'll be back on tomorrow, Thursday, uh, 30 minutes after the opening bell of the New York Stock Exchange, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Trade safe.